on. You have an increasing demand, the ETF being a key part of that. Uh, and I think it's also people realizing that crypto plays a role as an asset. Uh, you know, it's a two and a half trillion dollar market. Maybe it's a little less than that now. But so it's basically just predicting it's going to double by the end of the year. And uh, if anything, I, I think I probably under predicted that. We're going to see XRP used before long. This is going to bring about exactly what the BRICs want. Decentralization. I think a lot of us in the industry believe that clear regulation will accelerate the long-term vision. That vision can only come to light with sensible regulation. I mean, like Ripple, for instance, as well, you could totally imagine that Ripple would also maybe be an ETF, right? This could very well be a technological and financial revolution, and the United States has kind of, at least for now, decided to sit it out. It's normally after about six months after halving that you see a new all-time high in terms of prices. But this time around, it happens even before the halving, right? Which is why it's unique. Uh, if you mean crypto like Bitcoin, I've always said it's a fraud. This isn't about crypto. This is about freedom. This is about upward mobility. This is about people. Enjoy the ride, pal. It's the XRP If you got some baggies, welcome to the party while I'm back to some more. Moon o'clock news, no breakfast, no coffee, just straight extra, extra. Bullishness, shout out to the latest sub. Appreciate you stopping by, tuning in, smashing them likeies, stuffing some That's baggies, go ahead. Throw on those moon suits, throw on those pilot shades, buckle up, because the future's extra, extra. Bullish, let's go full speed, full throttle. Into the cryptoverse, we have the total global cryptocurrency market cap today at 2.39 trillion, up about 2.4 percent in the past 24. We got XRP in the number eight spot, currently right around 49.50 cents, two for a dollar. We got Stellar XLM right around 10 cents. We got BTC 62k 846 ETH right around 3k. We got Flare Networks here right around 3 cents. Axelar dollar 18. XDC right around 0 0.037. We got Songbird right around a penny. Stronghold 005 006. Zahao right around 11 12 cents. And Evernote right around. 30 cents quick announcement before we get started we got the moon party a couple weeks away may 3rd 2024 make sure to get your tickets down below also make sure to download the two ticks app log in with your email you should be good to go may 3rd moon party we also got the single to mile pool party come on down xrp las vegas 2024 we got one from Stuart autorati to pop things off senator loomis and gilla brandy continue to advance the crypto policy with their draft stablecoin bill there is much left to be done but great to also see others in congress now engaging positively with crypto regulation innovation is not and should never be partisan we got the payment stablecoin act we got quite a few videos to go through in this video. Let's go ahead and get started with Ripple. Big Brad Garland House on Fox News this morning, talking stable coins and pushing for U.S. regulators to step up. Lee is the CEO of Ripple, Brad Garlinghouse. Brad, it's great to see you. Good to see you again. Thank Thanks you so much for being here. First, assess where we are in this market because crypto is up huge in just the last couple of weeks, right? Well, it's been up. It came down a little bit this past weekend. Uh, but I think if you step back over the last six months, Bitcoin's up about 250%. I think you're going to continue to see tailwinds, partly because of the ETFs that have been approved, which you and I spoke about in, in Davos, but also the upcoming halving, which is imminent. Yeah, it's a great it's a great point. The ETF uh, introduction really broadened out the market in terms of potential users, I think. And people wanted to get in on it, so they bought an ETF to do so. But you recently predicted that the crypto market will double in size to five trillion dollars by the end of 2024. That is a big prediction just by the end of this year. Yeah, I don't even feel like it's that big a prediction when you step back. And, you know, like any market, this is driven by supply and demand. You have decreasing supply for a whole bunch of reasons, the having uh, Bitcoin being an important one. You have an increasing demand, the ETF being a key part of that. Uh, and I think it's also people realizing that crypto plays a role as an asset. Uh, you know, it's a two and a half trillion dollar market. Maybe it's a little less than that now. But so it's basically just predicting it's going to double by the end of the year. And uh, if anything, I, I think I probably under predicted that. I feel like Washington is still trying to understand this market and the people no, writing no the question. legislation or uh, potential legislation here to put barriers and, and, and around this market. I don't know that they really understand uh, the, the strength and the growth story here. But you think 
putting regulation around this, putting barriers in place is going to be a positive for this market. There is no question. I mean, one of the headwinds that has held back the market, the largest economy in the world, the United States, has been one of the most problematic for the crypto market. Innovation, entrepreneurs and capital have flown into markets that have actually constructively engaged this market. So Dubai, Singapore, even the UK, the, the EU has passed uh, legislative progress here. The US has really been behind the eight ball. This administration, I think, has taken a pretty anti-crypto stance led by the SEC. Gary Gensler as the chair uh, has really because taken- Because he doesn't understand it. I, I, I think there's some- He does and the people working for him don't. It's not clear to me. I mean, clearly, I think you have politicians, and I would frankly call out Elizabeth Warren goes out and says, the only people using crypto are, you know, bad actors. It's just not true. And it, it, like, the U.S. should have a pro-innovation, pro-compliance policy. This is good, for, you know, in terms of growing jobs, high-paying jobs, growing the economy. And I think you're seeing that, you know, people go out and just, you know, talking points around anti-crypto that it doesn't even make sense. This shouldn't even be a partisan issue. This is about growing our economy. Yeah. This is about leading the next wave of innovation. I was around Silicon Valley when the internet was booming. Massive amount of value creation, massive amount of job creation. We got the BTC having right around the corner, possible ripple case closure with the SEC. We got stable coin regulations, possible crypto regulations. Brad knows what's coming. You know what's coming. And they can't stop it. The best is still yet to come. We got Rob Cunningham, BRICS, Momentum, XRP Adoption, Global Decentralization, Gold Primacy, and De-Dollarization, all accelerating by the end of 2024. I mentioned the surrender in, in Ukraine. I mentioned the launching of competing CBDCs. There's not going to be one. There might be 12. And anyone who thinks that everyone's going to follow Basel, you're dumb as a rock. You're dumb as a rock. <laughs> the BRICs are, are now a union without unity. And it's a very interesting union. They do not have unity. Uh, what they have is a common objective. And it's de-dollarize. We're going to see, not dissension, we're going to see apparent disorganization by the end of this year within the BRICs. The West is going to say the BRICS doesn't really exist. They have no unity because they're not following a single method of trade payment. They're going to use the Russian ruble. They're going to use the Chinese yuan. They're going to use maybe a digital currency coming out of Persia, Iran. They're going to use gold tokens for the nations that have sufficient uh, gold reserves. They've, the Chinese just announced the, the, the Chinese blockchain platform and the BRICS adopted a similar platform also maybe it's the same platform I don't know who's going to run it we're going to see XRP used before long this is going to bring about exactly what the BRICS want decentralization and we're going to have so much decentralization by the end of this year and early next year that the dumbasses in the West who don't know how to analyze out of their jock strap are going to say the BRICS are disunited. No, they've achieved their goal of decentralizing the alternative options for trade payment. It's going to be very exciting. Now, we got one from XRP drops all parts for our Ripple President Monica Long at the Web Summit 2024 in Rio. We got the present cycle, real institutional adoption, Ripple's focus on institutions, regulations in the Internet of Value, favorite use case, the future of Web3, focus on real world utility. Yeah, I can yes. I can start off. Um, it's funny being here at Web Summit. I've gotten some questions about, you know, now AI is the darling. Web3 is sort of in, in the back room or, you know, Bitcoin's revenge coming back this year. I've been in the industry for 11 years now, and I've seen this movie before. <laughs> you know, there's peaks and valleys uh, to different cycles, and a lot of it's tied to Bitcoin halving, which is just upcoming. But if we zoom out, what's exciting to me is over the longer arc of time, we're seeing growth and maturity in Web3. And uh, I think a lot of that and what's really exciting about this latest cycle to me is real institutional adoption. 
if you think about it, some of the biggest brands in financial services like Goldman and BlackRock and Fidelity, they actually built their products and offerings in bear markets, meaning they see the bigger picture at hand. So I think that's what's going to be really different about this year is the institutional embrace and, and takeoff. Uh, so at Ripple, we have focused our entire business all along on institutions. So we've been at it for many years, uh, working with primarily banks and other types of payment companies around the world to use blockchain as a, as a layer or uh, a new infrastructure to make um, global money movement a lot more efficient. And we certainly have noticed in the past you know, few quarters here, a much stronger lean in from banks around the world in markets where the government has provided clarity of how to regulate crypto assets, like here in Brazil, there's certainly a much stronger liftoff. Hong Kong be another key market in that regard. To the, to the key point of is regulation orthogonal with the original purpose and mission behind cryptocurrency and blockchains, which to, to me, it means an internet of value. It means greater inclusion, more access for more people, more affordable financial services. I'm coming at it from a financial services lens. And I, I really strongly believe, I, I think a lot of us in the industry believe that clear regulation will accelerate the long-term vision because it's about applying sensible rules and frameworks uh, to make sure that, you know, transacting, storing value on chain is safe, secure, resilient. Um, these are important things to make the, the chain underlying a, a application or service make it actually useful and usable to a broad population of people. And going, Yacht, you started off talking about it. You're excited about the inclusion implications of this work that we're doing. And I think that is what, why a lot of people have gravitated toward the Web3 space. And I think that that vision can only come to light with sensible regulation. So another one from XRP Jobs. Paul Barron absolutely nailed it. And XRP ETF could be next because XRP in and of itself is not a security. Off here with a clip. And this is from Yatsu uh, and also with XRP on stage talking about ETFs. Listen in. So obviously on the institutional level with the Bitcoin ETF, the ETH ETF that was just uh, approved in Hong Kong uh, yesterday. How do you see these big events this year, along with the halving that is also coming up um, in a few days? How do you see the these trends being developed in terms of institutional adoption in general and in terms of retail adoption? Yes. Uh, so at Ripple, we have focused our entire business all along on institutions. And we certainly have noticed in the past you know, few quarters here, a much stronger lean in from banks around the world. There's certainly a much stronger liftoff. Hong Kong be another key market in that regard. I think one of the things that's interesting is that we're not done yet with spot ETFs, broadly speaking. So Hong Kong just recently came in together with Ethereum spot ETF, first one in the world, I would say. Then there's Singapore, there's Tokyo, there's London, there's Europe. But I think also, you know, um, you know, CF Benchmarks, for instance, recently actually issued a GameFi index, right? Which basically is just the beginning of another level of institutionalization. Because of course, these tokens don't trade millions. They trade hundreds of millions of dollars a day. I mean, like Ripple, for instance, as well, you could totally imagine that Ripple would also maybe be an ETF, right? There's ways in which these systems are included. So, so now the institutional adoption gives it that credibility. And of course, the regulators can no longer ignore it. Some of them want to, and actually the ones who don't and actually are afford are winning. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, the regulatory environment in the United States is still not great. And so I generally kind of my heart breaks to tell crypto projects that they probably, you know, depending on what they're trying to do, they probably want to stay out of the United States if they're going to hit any of the hot buttons, any of the things that, you know, the United States government has shown uh, you know, that they want to create a problem, that they're going to create a problem. For companies like Ripple that have the money to operate outside the United States, it's not as big of a handicap, but my heart breaks for small groups of people who are located in the United States. Like, what are they supposed to do? You know, you got, you got a group of five or six people who are based in, let's say, San Francisco or something or Austin, and they, they don't have the money to operate outside the United States. It's just sad to me that, that they're, could very well be a technological and financial revolution. And the United States has kind of, at least for now, decided to sit it out. But, uh, but I mean, there's certainly cause for optimism. I think we're going to see pushes for change in regulation. 
We got Mr. Man XRP, the upcoming Bitcoin halving in 2024, and Bitcoin ETS in the US are fueling speculation for a Bitcoin super cycle. This could drive increased institutional and retail demand, leading to a rise in Bitcoin's price. This cycle is a bit different from past cycle. I mean, you you have been involved in crypto, so you know. Crypto would normally go through four year cycle, right? Uh, price movement cycle, which coincide with the halving, which is going to take place in about nine days time for Bitcoin. It's normally after about six months after a halving that you see a new all time high in terms of prices. But this time around, it happens even before the halving, right? Which is why it's unique, uh, uh, in terms of market cycle. And one of the key reasons is really the introduction of the ETF where you bring in so many new users new liquidity right um, i think i saw some figure yesterday that 14 billion net inflows has gone into the the crypto etf in the state right so so those are those are important numbers but it's still very early days because that is just the first part of it with that there'll be much more financial innovation there'll be more product structuring that you come through you see a lot more independent houses now being able to advise and their clients to do some allocation into crypto, the foundations, the endowments are going to come true. On our side, we see a lot of track five firms, right? The traditional trading firms now adding crypto as an additional asset class into their suite of products that they trade constantly on a daily basis. And we start to serve them as well, right? So those will bring in new liquidity, uh, pools in, into this industry. So those are key positive, uh, uh, and we are very bullish, right? Uh, of the way forward. Best is still yet to come. Crawl walk. Then we rock it. We got the Bitcoin having countdown one day, five hours away, 24 minutes. Know what you hold. We got one from Nerdy X. Bitcoin is a security. Watch your guru, Justin JP Morgan CEO Jamie Diamond says Bitcoin is a fraud and a Ponzi scheme. Crypto. If you mean crypto like Bitcoin, I've always said it's a fraud. Uh, so are, no hope for it. Well, if it's if they think they're a currency, there's no hope for it. It's a Ponzi scheme. It's a public decentralized Ponzi. We got Eleanor Terry. October before launching his Senate campaign, John Dean said he would file an amicus brief on behalf of 5,000 individual Coinbase customers. If the SEC case proceeded to district court or appeal, now it has. I asked if he still has plans to help. Run for Senate and can you help Coinbase customers at the same time? Well, I guess we're going to find out. I, I can tell you this. Uh, I've never um, stopped doing something that I said I would do. I will fight for that person that has $2,000 or $500 or $5,000 in savings in Bitcoin or whatever uh, to the day I die. This isn't about crypto. This is about freedom. This is about upward mobility. This is about people who want a fighting chance, people who want to build a little wealth, they're not looking to get rich. They, they're never, they're not crypto bros. They're just regular people that say, hey, I want a little exposure to this alternative asset class. We got Stellar Or. Congratulations to the Stellar Ecosystem, member of ARF1 for merging with Humo Finance. The joint business expects to surpass $3 billion in on-chain liquidity volume this year, pushing forward cross-border payments and asset tokenization. We got El Crypto altcoins. You can give up here or experience the biggest run in many years. USDT dominance broke through a trend line that has been intact for almost six years. MACD is showing very strong bearish momentum. This is just the back test full sin afterwards, in my opinion. Dark Defender, the moment is not just a coincidence, it's deja vu. A deja vu that takes us back to 2017, a time of significant shifts in the cryptocurrency market. We are one of the most extended sideways, but the targets and the support Fibonacci points are still the same. I have added the levels we discussed in August of 2023 to the chart below, and since then, XRP has ranged between the same levels. Things are progressing slowly, but between our levels with zero change, our targets are precisely defined and shining like stars. Still, the God kind of is the missing part. We know the timing is everything, and the God kind of is getting closer one minute at a time. And we know XRP likes to run last, but pumps the hardest. That coins kid, the DXY, may be giving us a clue to the upcoming pump here for crypto. The reason we have seen such a big pullback is because this thing is wrapping up into the resistance above. Looking for this to fall to the green line, which should take some of the selling pressure off and risk. Bitcoin, XRP, Cardano, VeChain, and company. And we got Santa and Feed. Regardless of your stance on all coins after the major market-wide plummets over the past week, keep an eye on the top trending assets like Velo, Omni. And with that being said, Batman and Bag Ladies, let our friend know that the greatest opportunity, multiple lifetimes, is still at hand. But the trains left the station. Tick tock. Tick tock. 
let them know that the moon party's right around the corner. We got the BTC having in about a day. Ripple finality in the case. We got stablecoin crypto regulations right around the corner. Ripple versus SEC finality. Know what you hold, know what's coming, and know why. They want those bags back. Where will those bags be when that regulation jar molasses finally breaks open? An XRP true price is finally revealed. Later glitches. Rich ducks up in this place, getting bags until we space So many NFTs while it's out of space. We richer than the mother duck, rock is headed up. Bags be getting stuff, bags be getting buffed like crypto wedding. You know what you're holding, you know what you got. This a once in a life opportunity, take your shot. Filling up more bags when it drop. SEC mad, cause we know the plot. Uh. And I'm feeling great when we finally lift off. Don't be shocked, family think you crazy. Cause you keep on getting dropped. Sacrifice it all till we hit the top. I'm staking on my coin.